if you are thinking or already have scheduled your AWS professional exam, most likely you're aware there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. And if this is your first time writing an AWS certification, I highly recommend you to check out my other video first because going directly for AWS certification, especially in professional level, just relying on your hands-on experience can still significantly reduce your chances of passing the exam. And if you already have an associate AWS certification under your belt, congratulations and welcome to BikeMonk. In this video, I'm gonna share my study plan and strategy to help you pass AWS professional in your first attempt. Many large and small enterprises have their data and applications on the cloud or are looking to migrate it there for which they need people with experience in enterprise level. Having a professional level experience gives them the confidence to hire you. In AWS website, you will find AWS structures as documentation not by the service name or domain, but by the family of service, such as compute, storage, database, and so on. It's better to follow the same structure while preparing for your exam. Just in case AWS adds or removes any service, you can easily identify. Now this is the page for AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional. On your right side, you'll find the exam overview. It is 180 minutes exam, will cost you $300. There are 75 long scenario based questions. 750 is the passing scale source for all professional level and specialty exams. Since the knowledge and skill tested on these exams are vastly different, the passing raw scores are different for associate and professional level. Check out the link in description if you want to understand how exactly AWS scoring works. Scroll down to open the exam guide. To pass the exam, you need to explain and apply all the five pillars of the AWS well-architected framework. You should be able to map business objectives to application or architecture requirements. You should be able to design a hybrid architecture using key AWS technologies. We should be able to architect a CI CD process. However, you're not expected to know each and every service in AWS, such as machine learning, Amazon Game Lift, or be it front end development of mobile apps. There are two types of questions you can expect in the exam multiple choice, which has one correct response and three incorrect responses, and multiple response, which has two or more correct responses out of five or more response options. Note that unanswered questions are scored as incorrect and there is no penalty for guessing. So make sure you don't leave any answer unattended. The exam is divided into five domains. Design for solutions and continuous improvement are given the most importance. But that doesn't mean you skip other sections. Each domain can have a combination of services and vice versa. For example, services such as S3 can fall under both continuous improvement and cost control. So it is in your best interest to just use the percentages to set your expectation for the exam and cover each of the services agnostic to the percentages. Finally, in the appendix, you'll find a list of all the relevant AWS services in scope of the exam. You will find many free and paid AWS professional certification courses in YouTube, Udemy, or Plural site. After going through a few of them, I found Dolphin ET and A Cloud Guru are of the best quality. I have personally used Dolphin ET to pass my professional exam. In any case, choose one course and stick with it. Jumping from one course to other is simply a waste of time. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. The main instructor of Dolphin ET is ESA. His style of teaching and the course format really helped me immensely to pass my professional certification. As you can see, you need a monthly subscription to take the course. A Cloud Guru is another alternative you can look into, which is also subscription based. But they have been teaching AWS for a long time, almost since its inception, and carry a lot of experience. Now, both Dolphin ET and A Cloud Guru offer one week free trial if you're still not sure which one to go for. The courses mentioned along with practice exams, but they might not give you enough practice. One of them is Wiz Labs. Wiz Labs has been there for a while. Um, they have uh, about 400 practice questions uh, with them. 
and their pricing is very competitive it's about ten dollars however at the time i gave that exam it was about few years back i had quality concerns with their questions and not just me there were a few a lot of people complaining about it they might have got better and finally i have been given a strong positive review on brain cert courses certification questions especially there is a high chance for the same question in brain cert to appear in your aw certification exam to summarize go with one course dolphin ad or a cloud guru and choose at least one practice exam wiz labs udemy or brain cert i have personally had more success with brain cert as per as exam questions are concerned in 2021 there are way too many white papers you'll find there are actually more than 200 plus and you don't want to read them all but there are a few worth reading to maximize your success start with overview of aws now this white paper is 95 pages long but you only need to read the first few pages to get an overview of all the aws services read overview of deployment options now this white paper covers various ways to deploy your code onto AWS infrastructure, EBS, ECS, EKS, and more. And you'll also learn about some other deployment strategies the exam tests on, such as blue-green deployment, rolling deployment, or in-place deployments. The third white paper I suggest is microservices on AWS. Now, microservices and serverless architecture questions, they comprise of a sizable portion of most of the AWS certification exams. This white paper covers the three common microservices patterns which is API-driven, event-driven, and data streaming. In addition, it also discusses the benefits and challenges of microservices architecture in AWS. This white paper is also a great overview of API Gateway and AWS Lambda. In addition to these three white papers, there are a few more white papers which are in fact currently archived, but worth having a check. They are well-architected framework, building a fault torrent application in AWS and a white paper on storage services. All the links are in description. You might be finding people passing professional exam in two to three weeks. And in many situations, they are either taking the exam for the second time just to refresh their certification or having plenty of AWS experience and maybe can afford studying for many hours at a time. If you recently got your associate certification, this is the best time to get done with your professional certification as well. With consistent two hours of daily study, it will take you three to four weeks. And if there has been a long gap, or if this is your first certification, which I do not recommend to take, consider spending at least six weeks. For first three weeks, you complete your courses. In the next week, you start with all the practice questions not just the one from the course but also the one you have purchased to supplement your course practice questions in the following week revise the course again maybe at 1.5x speed at the same time continue with your practice questions and in the last week you continue with all your practice questions as you are going through the practice questions and the course it's very important that you make sure you're noting down all your mistakes Time management is probably the most important aspect of this exam. It is a three hours exam, but you have 75 long scenario based questions to solve. So try to solve the questions in one pass. And if you're not sure of the correct answer, just make your best guess instead of using the flag feature to visit it later. And if you are not a native English speaker, don't forget to request ESL accommodations for extra 30 minutes. For example, I'm from India and Indians can be considered non-native speakers of English because many states in India still teach English as a second language. AWS has made it possible to take the exam remotely. While it seems to be easier and better, there are some precautions if you decide to take it from home. So for example, you should be having a dedicated room where nobody should come during the exam and you will have to show it to your proctor with your webcam before the start. You are not allowed to leave the room during the exam, not even for toilet. And of course, you need to have stable and reliable internet connection. Taking notes has immensely helped me personally. And not just me, a lot of the candidates who have successfully passed their AW certification. My favorite is OneNote, where I can categorize by topics, be it by services, practice exam questions, 
list my weak points or maybe give a summary of various services which I can go through in the final week of the exam. Always try to make your own notes as you are preparing for the exam. In the final week, don't get distracted by new contents. Instead, focus just on your practice. By focusing on your practice, you'll expose weak points which you can review and practice again to solidify your knowledge. And like I said earlier, taking notes really helps out in writing down those weak points and revising them again. And finally, have a good night's sleep. Wake up early, reserve your energies, and try to take and pass the exam early in the day. All the best. <laughs>